Today on The State of Us, men are giving up on college. They feel lost. Why is that? Welcome to the State of Us. I'm your host, Justin T. Weller, joined, of course, by our friendly redneck liberal, Mr. Lance L. Jackson. And today, a generation of American men are giving up on college. They say they just feel lost. At the close of the 2020-2021 academic year, women made up 59.5% of college students, an all-time high, and men 40.5%. U.S. colleges and universities had 1.5 million fewer students compared with five years ago, and men accounted for 71% of the decline. What is to blame or to credit for this drop in men in higher education, and not only the decline in those who go, but the decline in those who finish. That's what we're going to look at today and what it tells us about society. But before we dive in, Lance, what is the word of the day? Well, the word of the day is Lozel. L-O-S-E-L. It's only two syllables. Lozel. Also can be pronounced Lozel, but it means as a noun, a worthless person, Or as an adjective, feeling worthless. Are American men feeling worthless? Is it, are they feeling like there's just nothing for them to do? And so therefore they are just sitting around and letting others move on with their lives and taking over. I think that's a, it's a great discussion because we know that if you sit around and you don't work for something, then others will take your place. The education gap, which holds at both two and four year colleges, so it's not just four year universities, has been slowly widening for the past 40 years. But the divergence increases at graduation. After six years of college, 65% of women in the US who started a four year university in 2012 received diplomas by 2018, compared with just 59% of men during the same period. In the next few years, two women will earn a college degree for every man if the current trend continues. And what we're going to look at today is what are the contributing factors to this, some of which uh, will probably be common sense, others of which will be a little bit more surprising. We have on the docket the pandemic, options in high school, social media, what it means to be a male today, costs of college, and social issues as the main contributing components to this. So Lance, let's start with the, we'll get the, we'll get the big one out of the way. That's kind of the misnomer right now, which is the pandemic. And I thought this was really interesting because you might say, well, okay, we know that, you know, some people quit going to school or paused or whatever because of the pandemic, but family finances are believed to be one of the causes related to the pandemic of why men have left college at a higher rate. And initially, you have to read this and think about it for it to make sense, but it is kind of fascinating. Millions of women left jobs, okay, so notice here we're saying jobs, not school, to stay home with children when schools closed in the pandemic. Many of those women turned to their sons who were in college for help, and some young men quit school to work. So you have this interesting dynamic of, The family needs support, and for whatever reason, it seemed to fall on the women who were either never went to college or who had gone to college and graduated. They had children, and there were a lot of men that stepped in who were in in high school or leaving high school, about to go to college or in college, who delayed their collegiate plans to help with the younger siblings, or to get a job, make more money for the family, what have you. Well, and I think part of this, too, that you didn't address there that I am interested in, how many of those were single-parent homes? That one's coming up. Because I think therein lies part of that, right? We still live in a society where I think the trend is changing, and I think that the trend changing is is good, but, okay, the women are going to take care of the children, and the men are going to go to work. And I think that still exists in a lot of the United States and it's changing and it's good that it's changing because obviously, maybe it's not obvious, but to me, 
everybody should do both or everybody should do what they feel best led to do. There shouldn't be gender roles to this. But unfortunately, that's still a part of it. And obviously, if you are a young male and there are younger siblings at home, you could take care of the younger siblings and go to college while mom stayed at work if you had to. So, I mean, I think we need to sometimes look at, we we pick these things out as excuses or reasons, and there are other ways to solve the problem, but too many times we fall back to whatever is easiest or what has been done in the past as a way to solve the problem. This kind of bleeds into the next one which is social issues and what it means to be a male today, which I think are big, as Lance has highlighted here, big components of this. And one of the items cited there was how many of these were single parent households. Well, while we don't have the exact number, one of the items mentioned, social science researchers cite distractions and obstacles to education that weigh more on boys and young men than they do on women. These include video games, pornography, and this is the big one that you were alluding to, increased fatherlessness. So lack of fathers at home and cases of overdiagnosis of boyhood, restlessness, and related medications to address those situations. I think the fatherlessness one is interesting. We've talked about it some over the past number of years. You know, there's this whole big thing about single parents, right? And there's And it's one of those issues where I think we do a disservice by boiling it down to be super simple, right? There are single parents, quote unquote, by choice. And what we mean by that is take, for example, the single man, the single woman who have not been, who are not in a committed relationship, but they want to be a parent. And maybe they go out and adopt somebody or they find a surrogate or whatever, right? And they have a child. Well, that's a that I mean, just, you know, again, that's a very different type of single parent than somebody who got pregnant as a teenager and the father runs out on them and they decide to keep the child. And I mean, that's like, you know what I mean? Those are different worlds. Like one we've entered into very, very consciously, willingly. We're probably at a stable point in life. We've made a big decision here to go down this route. This other one. Maybe it was more of a mistake. It was not really planned, but now that you're faced with it, you decide to embrace it. And you're probably at different ages there too, right? I mean, the the other scenario I talked about, we're finding, especially with millennials, they're in their 30s, usually late 30s. They're thinking about having, right, now we're going to have kids, mid, late 30s. Well, that other scenario I pitched, you're talking about people who are 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, and that probably was not you know, like on the agenda to to have children right now. So it's, I guess what I'm saying there is we lump it all together, but I think the issue of fatherlessness is, especially if you're not in a really stable income place, having a one parent household, it's hard anyway, even if you're in a stable place, it's extra difficult If you're not in a stable place financially and when we talk about the effects of men versus women, you know, I guess from a societal standpoint, since we have to have a woman to have a child, it's more of a given that women more often get left being a single parent than men do. Statistically speaking, again, this isn't, you know, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying that's just what the stats tell us. There are more single mothers out there raising children than there are single fathers raising children. And the the one downside to that is obviously if you have a child that is male and identifies as male and is looking for those influences in life, if the father is simply just not there, there is an added level, and that's what this article is referring to and social scientists are confirming, there is an added level of developmental challenge of they have to find somebody else to be that role model. Either mom has to try to pick up that slack or... They have to go find somebody else where if they're in a two parent household and they're one, at least one of those parents is male, they have what they feel like is that natural you know, person to turn to. And I know that's very boilerplate and very generic and everything, but I'm saying that's part of what this article is referring to is those increased rates of those of those challenges. The reason they disproportionately affect men is because 
statistically, it's more likely that a single family household or single parent household is female rather than male, which has a bigger impact statistically on the men than it does on the women. Well, and I think the point I take from that is when you said the stability in, in income, well, when does that come? That usually comes in your 30s. That's usually when you've decided what you want to do. You've been in a job long enough that you have some stability, one, in the workplace, and you've started to see a growth in your income because you've either gone to school or you've been in the job and you've advanced in the job. And that's a totally different style of parenthood than people who become parents as teenagers or in their early 20s when you're still struggling to get through school or to start in the workplace and you're taking entry-level jobs to work through, that's an entirely different style of parent between being a parent in your early 20s and a parent in your early 30s. And I think that's the point that I took away from what you said. That was the main point. And so it doesn't, is that what's more important when you become a parent than if it's a single parent or two parent relationship, that would be an interesting dynamic to look at. The other point I want to make though, we've talked about this is that in the last school year, 21, 22, there are more than a million more women in schools than men, even though women only make up 49% of the college age population. Proportionally higher percentage too. Yes. There are more men of college age in the United States than there are women, yet women have more than a million applicants in this recent year to go to school than men. So this is something, you know, and again, my question would be, is this a bad thing? I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about it as, you know, in these articles as this is a bad thing. Is it? Um, that's, Maybe a question for later in the show. Well, and I think that begs the question of what do you want from a society? I mean, we've been talking about for years, obviously, that part of the gains that we've seen, and the article mentions this, you know, part of the gains that we've seen over many, many years is just an increased participation from women, generally speaking, because if we rewind 60 or 70 years ago, they were almost not in college at all, because societally, that's not you know, that was not how society operated in the United States anyway. And so that has obviously been attributed to their leaps and bounds, you know, leading up to now. But now we're at this interesting place where we can also clearly see that the participation from men isn't just dropping over the last year. It's been dropping now consistently. Um, and the question, as Lance has posed, is, is that a bad thing? Um and one that we will endeavor to answer here. But we still have to talk about how social media is affecting men, options in high school, what it means to be male in society, and costs. Those are yet to come. Keep it here on The State of Us, and we'll be right back. The question was posed whether or not it's bad that men are not going to college at the same rates they were and proportional to women is now substantially less. Um, I guess my, my quick answer to that is, I don't know if it's quick. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I'm like, I don't know. I was going to be impressed if it was quick. <laughs> if it was quick. People know if they've listened to this show that I am not somebody that blindly advocate advocates college, right? I don't think that just anybody should just go just cause. You know, I don't I that's I don't think that's a good reason to go, given, especially given the cost today of college. At the same time, I think that college is very valuable for the people who are seeking professions in which a good bit of additional education is necessary to do that job. So based on that line of thinking, inherently if there are just proportionally less men than were going before, I don't think that's good because it tells us that there's clearly, right, something has shifted. And the question is, what has shifted? And when you look at what has shifted, I sum most of it up into what we're talking about, a disenfranchisement of 
not not just men, because I mean we're seeing the issue with you know women too who are in high school, but it is affecting men at greater rates, and we're seeing them you know feel worthless or feel lozel. They're being they're feeling lozel, right? Good for nothing, worthless, and I and I think that that right because those are the contributing reasons. That's not good. Um, now. If we said, well, the main contributing reason is because they have seen that there's these opportunities in trade jobs and, you know, other things that don't require higher education and they're in the workforce and they're having good lives and they're happy, like then my perspective on this would be totally different. I'd say, well, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's not really bad. You know, they're doing things. They're happy. They're filling jobs that are needed. Great. The problem is that that's not really what's happening. There is some of that taking place. And that is the options kind of in high school component that we're talking about. There are today, you know, versus 20 years ago, a number of jobs that you can get that are very good paying right out of high school. And there are a lot of men, and this ties into our cost component, Lance, who are looking at it and saying, yeah, I don't know if it's really worth it, you know? And do I really want to spend four years doing this thing, or I could just get a job right now and do this. And that's where I guess what I'm saying is in those cases, I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad because I think people know I'm a proponent of you should go do, you know, what makes you happy. And if you're really happy and you're fulfilled by doing that, then I don't have any problem with you not going to college. But if the reason you're not going to college is because you feel worthless or feel like there's no way for you to contribute to the world or or because you're lazy, like those are not, I think we should all be concerned about those things because that's a, that's a societal, we're leaving people behind. And why is that? Why, why do they feel that way? Well, there's an interesting editorial also linked at the state of us from a professor at Ohio university who gives four reasons for this happening. And he says, first, the rise in female labor force participation. He said that, you know, women are marrying later Average age of 28 in 2020, up from 20.3 years of age in 1960. So that's one reason why we're seeing more women in colleges. Two, he said, as to your point, labor market shifts have played to women's interests and strengths. Women play a larger role in healthcare and education, and demand for workers in these service industries has increased far more than historically male-dominated fields such as automobile and steel manufacturing. Third, women typically outperform men academically. There are more men failing to graduate from high school than women. Ding, 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 ding. Very difficult to get in college if you don't get out of high school. Um, and about half of women entering a four-year college graduate graduate in four years compared with only 40% of men. And then fourth, and I thought this is a very interesting one, 1.24 million more men are incarcerated than women, meaning they're in jail, largely preventing them from attending a traditional college. And so, you know, I mean, there's some interesting things here. You know, women are putting off having children. Um, there more jobs are related to uh, fields that historically have been women. You know, I mean, that's, you know, I was in education, but I know that 85% of the staff were females. I was one of the lone males in a, you know, typical Midwestern small city high school. Women do better in school because, and this is another whole episode, but schools are set up for the way women learn more than it is for men. But that, then in that incarceration piece, you know, men are getting in trouble more than women do because they're, you know, doing things like even in college, bar fights and fraternity hazings. And, you know, not that that gets you put in a, you know, in jail forever, but if you're in trouble at school, you're more likely to get kicked out or not perform as well. Same thing happens in a high school. To your point, Justin, the guy says, well, I'll just quit school, be it high school or college. I'll go to work. I'm making decent money, you know, and for an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old, you are making decent money. You know, you're making that $18 an hour, maybe $20 an hour at this factory job. That's that's not a bad job, you know? So you're making thirty-five thousand to forty thousand dollars a year. 
Not, not bad. Well, because we just covered in a recent episode, right? Teachers, many teachers in the state of Ohio starting pays 30000 Right. And I just got a four-year education and I'm making 30000 And as you just outlined there, I got out of high school, have no debt, and I'm making 35000 Right. I mean, just a very basic anecdotal. But 15 years later, you're still probably going to be making about $35,000. That young woman who went to college and became a teacher and then went back to school and got their master's degree and then got another, you know, worked towards even more advanced college credit. Now, at the same age that you've been making $35,000, now 15, 10, 15 years into their career, they're making fifty to $55,000 a year teaching. So, yes, the entry level job is at 30. But you took an entry level job at 18 or at 21. And by the time you reach now, when you say more and more people are looking at entering parenthood, they're early to mid 30s, you're still making that entry level money. And those people that went to college have now who, you know, they've passed you because they've gotten degrees, advanced degrees and used school, and now in your 30s, that money that you were making when you're 18 doesn't go as far because you have a family and you have children. And the people who went to college, male or females, but typically we're talking about in the show today, women, they've now passed you in earnings because of their degree status. And so when you look, then you reach the age of 60 or 65, and you look to retirement, you're going to get, oh, a couple thousand dollars from Social Security if it's still in existence. And they're going to earn four to five thousand dollars a month from their retirement plan. Well, and then there's the other question of with all of that, the labor market demands, right? I mean, we it's not necessarily that you know, women were planning on that the jobs they're in right now would be in higher demand. Historically, the jobs that have higher percentages of women would also, um, you know, now be in higher demand and therefore are doing better as a result of it. Just like, you know, the men might enter, right? Say, I'm going to go be a plumber because right now I can make, you know, $65, $70 an hour being a plumber. Well, 10 years from now, if we have a huge recruitment of plumbers, now I'm only making... 20 or $30 an hour as a plumber and time has gone on. So inflation's gotten worse. So I'm making a good bit less money. I want to first acknowledge because I don't want society to cancel me for saying this. I want to first acknowledge that we are absolutely not where we want to be right on advancing women's opportunities in the workplace. Um, and career wise, we have more work to do. And I think that if people have listened to this show, they would know that Lance and I are both firmly of that opinion. Um, we're so much so of that opinion. Um, for those of you that don't know, our net we have a network of podcasts our company does that we produce. And I personally produce because it's important to me and it could be handed off to somebody else. I produce a podcast that's about you know women in corporate leadership and advancing those from a firm in New York because we think that it's important. And it is true that there are lots of issues like the wage gap right? That are very much still prevalent. One for one, same education, same experience. Women aren't, aren't making what men make dollar for dollar, you know? So yes, there are lots of issues there, but part of what we seek to do on this show is to tell people that one issue doesn't mean that there can't also be another issue. They don't preclude each other. They're not mutually exclusive, right? There can be issues facing men. And that doesn't mean that there are not issues facing women. It's a great point. Society has been working, right, um, to to help redefine what women can do and should be allowed to do and should be able to achieve and how they should be able to do it and a redefinition of the family structure and that it's okay to be a single mom and and, and on and on and on, right? Um, and my body, my right, and I'm not, we're not, I'm not directly disagreeing with any of that. And that's what I'm saying. They're not mutually exclusive. What we have failed to do, and we've covered this before on The State of Us, is we have failed to define what it means to be a male today. We have not done a good job of defining what the various options are. We've done, 
you know, we're doing a better job at getting to find, you know, that you can be proud to be a woman, that you can have the jobs that you want, that you can have a family and still be working. We're doing what my point is there. We're, we're communicating to the young women that these things are possible. Are we getting it all right? No, absolutely not. But there's a lot of media focused on that. And there's a lot of, you know, lessons and focus on what we can do there. And these young men, which Lance has highlighted, who are in education and traditional school, which is generally geared a little bit more on average toward how women learn than men, they're not, they're not hearing, you know, well, they're hearing what they should not do, but they don't get much in the way of these are the things you should do, or here's how we're going to address the different hormones that you're experiencing, right? Because, you know, we're saying behave this way. And is that behavior, are we taking into account the, the, just the sheer biological, you know, difference between the rate at which men develop versus women, you know, women maturing and developing faster, generally speaking, where men do not, and the different emotions that each experience along the way. And I'm not sure that we're doing an adequate job of that. So I think part of it is, as we know, Kids have questions and they're going to try to figure out answers. And I'm wondering, is part of the worthlessness and good for nothing stuff that we're seeing young men experiencing now at higher higher rates, especially as it relates to career path and job opportunities and college, is that because we're not really, they, they feel lost because they don't, and that's the quote from the article, right? They really don't know. What do men do today? You know, as a man, what does it mean for me to be a man? They don't know. And they're not. And nobody's telling them that there's any answer to that. And I'm I'm posing the question of, is that perhaps the number one issue? And if it is, what do we do about it? We'd like your thoughts. Send us an email. Uh, it's podcast at thestateofus.org. We'd like to, to see what you think. And we're going to hear what Lance thinks in just a minute. Keep it here on The State of Us. And we'll be right back. We've talked about it a few times before, and I'm not sure that it's a terribly easy question to answer, but I don't think it's any more difficult necessarily than answering the question, what does it mean, you know, to be a woman? What does it mean to be a man today? Those are very subjective questions, and that's part of why I would contend we have trouble answering them today is because society is becoming more aware of there's a broad range of things that fit into that, right? Lance was growing up, I think it was a little bit more straightforward in terms of what society was preaching, right? As far as, Lance, if you're going to be a man, this is what it's going to look like. And, you know, if you have a sister, this is what it means to be a woman. You know, there's there's this box and somewhere in that box, that's what you do. Society's been working, I think, the past, you know, 20 to 40 years to sort of redefine that. I'm not sure that we've arrived at new definitions or that we ever could that everybody agrees on. So the question, Lance, is, is part of this issue that we're seeing with these young men and less of them participating in college and saying they feel they're lost, you know, being very losal, is that all related to this idea of they really don't know. To answer your question is very simply, yes. But here's why, okay, with these caveats. In the article that we're reviewing, uh, it says many of these uh, young men quit school or didn't enroll in college because they don't see a value in a college degree for all the effort and expense required to one. Okay, ding, 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 bell should go off, red light. Why? Why are they not being told? I just told them. In the last segment, you're going to go make, as one of these young men are in the article, he's making $15.50 an hour packing boxes at Amazon, not far from his house here in Ohio. It's not a long-term job, he said, but I don't know what to do next. And college seems to me the only logical path you can take in America, but it's too big a struggle financially and academically. He's like, I, you know, I don't know what else to do. We have a 23-year-old who quit at Defiance College in Ohio, who's now making $20 an hour delivering pallets of soda for Coke, for Coca-Cola in Toledo, Ohio. So again, 
young men who at that age are making pretty good money, who are going to make the kind of money that teachers and nurses will make when they get out of school after they've and then have to pay for college, right? So rather than, well, heck, that's the starting pay for education or that's the starting pay for a nurse. And I don't have to take on eighty to $100,000 in debt to get there. Well, I'm just going to do this job. But as I pointed out, and this is what I think to your point, is not being told to young men, okay, you're going to be better off the first 10 years of your work life, but the next 30, you're going to fall behind. And again, why are we not saying that, you know, to young men? Why don't we look at them and say, you know, education is a field that historically has been a field for women. And I think what we've done is we, in, in one aspect here is we've looked at young boys, young men and said, yeah, these aren't jobs for you. So you need to look at something else. And it's like, no, you know, if you're, if you're a young female and you want to be a coal miner, go be a coal miner. If you're a young man and you want to be a nurse practitioner, be a nurse practitioner. That's my point. We got to get away from traditional jobs and say, and we've done that with with women, to your point. We forced that issue and said, you know what? You go out there and you do whatever you want. If you want to go to college and you want to put off having children and you don't want to get married and you want to advance your career and you want to do, we said more power to you. We, we've given them all kinds of pushes and, and, and rightfully so. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, oh, we shouldn't be doing that. That's exactly what we should be doing. And I'm very proud of my two daughters who are entering their midlife in their 30s who are young professional women who are very successful on their own, okay? I, I think that's exactly what we need to be doing. But to your point, we've done that and not done the same thing for men. We've said, well, you just figure it out, okay? Instead of saying, why don't you go into the healthcare field? Why don't you go into education? And we know we get better care and we get better service in companies with more diverse points of view. And that goes both, and to Lance's point, that's across the spectrum, right? We want women and men, men and women working together in different fields. It shouldn't be 80% of teachers are female, you know? No, it shouldn't be that way. Just like it shouldn't be, you know, 80% of CEOs are male. If there are more men in education, it is more likely that education will adapt because there will be men there saying, you know, I'm not sure if this is really the best way to teach my, you know, students who are male because they seem to be, you know, on the whole, they're not as responsive to this. So do we need to try something a little different? And also, I just as you were talking, Lance, I thought this was really important that the female expectations thing, this came to mind. And I think it's worth noting. One of the messages to young women has been, generally speaking, you're going to have to work harder to get to the same place as a man, you know? And I think part of what has happened there is as society as a whole, as we have talked about, has kind of gotten softer, for lack of a better term. The work ethic maybe is not the same. One of the effects is that now we're seeing where men didn't have to work as hard to get to the same place. Women are now working harder and staying more committed to that. Men are trying to do the same level, and now as that equality gap is closing, that allows women to move in front of men in certain areas, like, for example, college, right? College, generally speaking, it ain't easy, you know? And a lot of these men in these articles are, you know, I just don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if I really want to do that. If it was easier, maybe I'd do it. And the women have been told since they were 12 years old, you're going to have to work your butt off if you want to go to college. You know, and if you want a good job like a man has and maybe get paid, not as much as they get paid, but more than your other female workers, you're going to have to work hard. The female work ethic over the past 20 to 30 years, you know, we have been drilling as a society into females that you are going to have to work harder and no, it's not fair, but that's how it is, you know, and we're not, we've kind of quit telling. And so now they've worked harder and in some areas have started to surpass men. <laughs> what a surprise. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hard work pays off. So, ding, 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 ding. Right. And the last thing I wanted to mention was the social media thing, because I I just, this is so critical. I, the number of young men that I have encountered who are, you know, disenfranchised and lost, and I think that is so interwoven to social media, wasting days away, hours and hours of time. And, you know, 
not getting often being served when you look at what women and men are served when they go down the TikTok, YouTube rabbit holes, the men are getting the violent, disconnected, disenfranchised content more frequently than females. And that's because that's what keeps them watching. But that goes back to the because we're not messaging to men about what do we think it means to be a man? What do we think your role in society is? They are that gap's getting filled. You know, and it's being filled by things that make them feel losel. There is a young man, 18 years of age, who just graduated from high school, decided against college despite earning a, having a 3.5 grade point average and earning a scholarship from a local veterans organization. Instead, he took a landscaping job and makes about $500 a week. And <clears throat> as a musician, is trying to earn income from creating and selling music through streaming services, and he invests in cryptocurrencies. Both his parents attended college, and they hope he will too, but so far, they haven't pressured him to. To his credit, he's got a work ethic. Yes, are there people who are making multimillionaires and making a good living doing this? Yes, but how many people are trying to do it versus how many people are being successful at it? How hard did those people that are making millions work? You take like one of the biggest, you know, YouTubers on on YouTube, right? Like Markiplier, for example, which some of our listeners may have heard of, you know, he was like on YouTube back when it launched, like in 2008 or 2010. So he's been doing this, you know, for what, 12, 13, 14 years. So, you know, he's been doing it a while. He was there at the beginning. And if you cover, I mean, he's been consistent, which is hard, right? I mean, lots of content all the time for a long time with no help. You know, so it's not to just say, yes, some of those people get lucky. Most of them worked really hard and got really lucky. Lots to cover, though, Lance. And why do we have this conversation today? Well, because here at True Chat, our mission is to educate people by providing honest, open and respectful conversations. And we want you to share this with other people and talk to them about it. And when they say, well, where can we hear it? You can tell them We're on Spotify, Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts and everywhere podcasts are found. You know, I think, Lance, that we work hard to produce a mindset here that is the opposite of losel, losel-ness, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I if think we can you do just it that created way. a new word. Well, it is. An, it can be an adjective or a noun, right? So losel-ness. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but uh, I think I have our score today. I think I eked out this one. I think uh, you did. Just ahead of Lance. Well, so. I gave you a two-syllable word. I, you did. So you I was, did, in fairness. I was trying to be be nice to you this today. <laughs> Uh, everybody likes somebody that wins, but you know, if they just beat up on the competition every time, each time, at some point it gets a little boring it to does, watch. Yeah. So people quit paying attention. So Lance to you. is throwing the breadcrumbs in there to say, you know, we got to let him, he wins just every now and again, you know, people will keep watching and my victories will be all the more sweet. So, uh, anyway, um, you can hear the state of us Tuesdays and Thursdays as a podcast and on the weekends on AM and FM radio stations across the country. For the state of us on True Chat in Urbana, Ohio, I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Lance Jackson. Special thanks to Bradley Butch, our producer extraordinaire, and thank you, our audience, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be the champ. Be sure to check out our website, thestateofus.org, for books, articles, and all the ways to tune in thestateofus.org.